there's a question here about, do you get to choose as actors the moment when you decide you're falling in love, or does the director tell you? <laughs> Leah? <laughs> <laughs> when did you fall in love? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's she's quite specific with with some things, but I think in the end, it's it's up to me, right. the actor, to to make that that choice for myself. Um, and do you think that Jonathan, the actor, right now in this moment in time, knows when Leah during the course of the play? Because you blocked out the whole play, right? You've had a chance to run it together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you suspect do that he knows? Do I think he knows? I don't know. <laughs> and maybe that's a secret that you don't want to. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know. I wouldn't. Well, I, I mean, there's certain things that are kind of structurally in, in the play mm -hmm. that to make it clear for the audience what exactly. When something it, happens, yeah, yeah. when things are happening. So. But I, but I would also say that it's, it's a, it's, because the love that is suggested is quite profound and quite selfless, actually, um, I, I think it, I mean, I declare my love in the library scene, you know, but right. through song and through playful song and also through, it's almost like he's a, 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 someone in grade three pulling the girl's hair who he has a bit of a fancy for. So I think it happens in fits and starts. You right. know? It often makes me think of that great line in uh, The Sound of Music, you know, for <laughs> my favorite musical. <laughs> no, uh, truly, where, where they talk about when did you first fall in love with me, and, she, and yeah. he says when you sat on that pine cone. But you've seen these two people fight throughout the entire, and to the point where he fired her and she went back to almost become a nun. But the truth is that love started, they started falling from the moment, really, they met each other. I think she says from the moment you blew that whistle mm. that she fell in love with him. And I think no. it's the same sort of thing in this play, that there are moments they keep... And then Harold goes back to his game playing, and then for a while he also thinks that she's a bit of a goer, if you know what I mean. Um, you know, truly, like, that, and that's Harold's pattern. He's always looking for the woman who's going to be, um, you know, a quick fix in a town. And for a moment he thinks of that. But at the same time, I think he always knows from the outset that she's something special. So you're professionals, which means that you have to kiss and still have husbands, Why wives, this line of questioning? <laughs> What's that like? Lie detector. How, and how many times do you kiss in this play? Uh, how many times do we kiss? Twice. 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 <laughs> but it is deep and long. And <laughs> All right, then. No, no. No, seriously. No, I mean, keeping, in, 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 keeping it in, in, uh, in the family, family entertainment uh, origin, it's, it's, it's actually the kisses are remarkably structured. Yeah. They really draw the audience out, and they're musically structured, so that's, that's ah. a bonus. And yeah. she's very specific, too, with what she wants. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, we've been getting very we, technical. We've been getting romance happens. lessons from yeah. Susan Shulman, which is, uh, you know, oh, it's next time I have dinner with her, I'll have to. Yes, she, she, she was a coach of something else at one time. There's a question here about what preparation each of you have done for these roles. Leah, you're always on the spot first. Yeah, why is it always okay. me first? Johnny, what did you do to prepare for this part? <laughs> uh, well, apart from sort of research, I mean, Harold Hill is extremely well-traveled. He's a salesman. Unfortunately, as an actor, I mean, maybe we're all salesmen, but, uh, <laughs> you know, a big part of being an actor is selling yourself, and so that certainly comes in handy. And, um, you know, there's a lot of research to be done about the, the time period. It's the most fascinating time period in American history, actually. It's a real, you know, it's right in the hub. It's a couple years before World War I, but it's also the Model T four-year, you know. It's, it's, so it's, a, it's rich in terms of that kind of research. And I also had to brush up on my singing, <laughs> which isn't necessarily about character, but it is just about being able to deliver, yeah. Right. Is it a stretch vocally for you? It's a stretch, uh, yes. <laughs> well, no, what it is, it's a stretch vocally. I don't, I, I, thank goodness I have done a lot of Shakespeare because it is, um, the articulation required right. for this particular part is mind-boggling. There are a yes. couple numbers where they're, they're like, uh, they're, I, I almost should have taken a class in rap. You know? well, that's As, I'm going to come back to that in a moment. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Susan said mm. that this was one of the first rap numbers. <laughs> yeah, <in the> exactly. <laughs> yeah. For yeah. anyone that loves hip hop and rap. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> and Leah, how about you? What, you obviously have a, an, ex, an extraordinary voice from everything I've heard. And um, so, what did you do to especially focus on this part? 
Um, well, I think what Jonathan said, you have to, you have to kind of key into the time and place where it's, it's taking place, because it is a different time than we're living in now. And the way people relate to each other in that time is different because yeah. of that. You Even know, just women, physically in their yeah, proximity. Yeah, women are very different. And, you know, um, how, they, how they relate to men specifically, right. I think, is, uh, is a real key mm -hmm. in this. We have some other comments here. Something about the, how large is the dance ensemble? Is it a challenge to integrate the larger musicals into the show? What's it like when you, you know, it's one thing for the two of you to be together and to have those, you know, kissing that you do, but what happens when it opens up and you're a part of a big ensemble? What's that like? It's fun. I mean, the town itself, River City, is both, uh, it's sort of acutely drawn and it's also, I wouldn't say parody, but there is, a, there is an element of fairly sophisticated satire about it. So right. once you're in the, I mean, and the people, the townspeople are, you know, they are, uh, I mean, they're actually pretty accurate um, cutouts of any small town, but at the same time, they're, they've got serious passions, they've got prejudice, they've got, you know, and so it's fascinating to be a part of that. I mean, my job in this play is to convince them of the need for a boys band and that is a that's a big undertaking right so we get in these numbers where suddenly the energy of the town becomes becomes the play and so that's really exciting and of course Marion I won't speak for her but you're an outsider mm -hmm. we're we're both outsiders in this play right mm -hmm. right although and I'm an outsider that lives in, in the, the town, town yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I remember actually I had something to bring up because Susan said that's a that's another theme of this play is is the outsider coming right. into an right. environment that is stayed and true and knows what it is. And, uh, and that's just a real, that's a real theme of the play. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if that answers your question, but. And Leah, do you enjoy the big numbers? Like when you're watching them and the kids oh, and everything. Oh, they're amazing, and... yeah. And there's a few right off the top that I'm not in. I don't, right. I don't come in until about the fifth scene or something like that. So the whole first part of the play, I just marvel at watching. There's 39 people in this cast. So yeah. it's a lot of people. 10 of them who are children. And, yeah. 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 So, so and they're amazing. wonderful. Those Big. kids are oh, so cute. Yeah, so we've great. got some, <laughs> yeah. some wicked kids in this. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to have one last question here, and it's an important one, and then I'll tell you a bit about next week. It's for you, Jonathan. Can we have a short sample of your rap? <laughs> <laughs> break it down, break it down. <laughs> no, wait, sure. You mean in the rap in the play? Yes. <laughs> I can't believe, who, had, who, had, who asked that question? <laughs> All right, you can you better see. Be, no, I'll be other to buy Oh, we got trouble, my friend. Nothing else. For you. <laughs> You'll have to see because it will blow your yeah, mind. Buy a ticket. I probably will probably cut an album after this this season. It's going to be called Trouble. Me <laughs> having trouble rapping. Yeah, <laughs> that's the name. It's going to be called Trouble. trouble. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, as you can see, it's time to end this interview. Okay, no kidding. Uh, next week, please join us. We're going to be uh, talking to two young people who were part of our conservatory training program, two young actors, and speaking to them about the conservatory production of Love's Labor's Lost, which is being directed by Michael Langham. So please join us next week. Tell your friends. Get lots of questions. And today, though, I want to thank very much both Leah and Jonathan for doing this. Thank you. I can't wait to see you guys. And it'll be very soon now, right? When do you go into previews? April 26th. April 26th. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Yeah. Please come visit. <laughs> see them both. Thank you for joining us today. Bye-bye. <laughs>